Are y'all set? Okay. Anytime you're ready. All right, let me just avoid Lily here. Okay. Okay, Lily, all right. Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. Well, congratulations. We learned from President Biden that the pandemic is over. The pandemic is over. I mean, I hope he managed to tell the virus that the pandemic was over because as best I can tell, there's still a lot of infections going around. But whatever, you know, between Trump saying it's going to be gone and and Biden saying it's over, I don't know. Thank, thank God we have presidents helping us with infectious diseases. Anyway, the good news is that things are looking good in the world. So your case rate's coming down. It's down almost 30% this past week. And Japan's finally looking good. We're happy for the Japanese because their economy's opened up. They made a couple of tough decisions, but they're doing okay. U.S. also looks good. We're down about 30% across the nation. And the best news, of course, is hospitalizations are down. You can see the hospitalizations dropping, particularly in the 70-year-old group, which is great. And mortality continues to drop. So, you know, as I said, lagging indicator, but that's all good. Now, state of Texas, uh, Harris County is still moderate. We're not quite down to low risk yet. We had 110 cases per 100,000, down from 152. And our admissions are 11 per 100,000, not quite under 10 yet. But our friends in Dimmick County, they finally are low. There are 20 cases down from 49 and 10 admissions. So they're doing great. And the best thing for Dimmick County is that, as you know, I regularly read the Harisa Springs at Haviland. And no obituaries for the past two weeks. I love it. It's in the newspaper on front page news. Love Dimmick County. Uh, and so here in the Texas Medical Center, our case, our positivity rate's down to 8.7%. Our hospitalizations continue to drop, all good. And the only concern I have is wastewater, while it's coming down, is slowing. You can see it plateauing. It's still almost three times, full, three times higher than it was uh, at its lowest point. But it's a concern. And there's another concern that it, <laughs> it's worth talking about. Remember, we've been talking about this other variant, the BA 4.6 variant. Well, that is growing. You can see this blue, it's taking a greater percentage. It is now up to 10% of cases in the U.S. And, and in the U.K. You know, does that mean things are going to get bad again? Well, there's some pretty good evidence that the Omicron variants continue to be fairly uh, low in severity in terms of illness. And so if you look, this is a really interesting study. Uh, that came out of the MMWR, the Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report from the CDC. If you look at hospital, uh, hospitalizations and crude mortality, early on in the pandemic, it was quite high. It came down during Alpha, it went, went up again in Delta. But if you see early and late Omicron numbers, they're all coming down. And this is the best evidence that we have that, you know, the, this Omicron variants are truly less severe in illness. So, you know, that means we may have to live with it, but at least it's not killing as many people or causing as much illness. But as I said, the BA 4.6 is a concern, and uh, we're getting some more information about that. As I mentioned, it's 10% of cases in the U.S., 10% in the U.K. It was first detected in January of 22, the January of this year in South Africa. We're not really sure what, how, how it emerged. Some people think it might have been a recombinant event where two different viruses were in the same host and were able to re recombine. There's pretty good evidence that it's more transmissible because it's beginning to outcompete BA5. And there's a good study that shows that uh, it's better at evading immune system. So if you look at people who've been dosed three times with the Pfizer vaccine uh, and compare its ability to neutralize BA5 versus the BA4.6, uh, antibodies from the uh, traditional vaccine, three, three doses, are only half as effective at neutralizing BA 4.6 as they were BA 5. So not, a, not only is it more infectious, it's more effective at evading the immune system. So what is the difference between those two variants? Well, it's actually only seven amino acids. Uh, and where, where are the mutations? It's very, very interesting. Uh, the mutations are in, in three different areas, uh, the nucleocapsid, uh, the membrane protein, and the envelope protein. But in addition, there are two mutations that are different from BA5 in the spike protein. 
one in this furin cleavage site that separates S1 from S2, and one in the receptor binding domain. And so those are, those are the, the genetic differences between the two. We don't know which one of those are the most important in terms of the differences in, in invading the immune system, but it's very, very interesting. And, and the reason it's important is this, the nucleocapsid is, a, is, a, is where the RNA is coated with uh, nucleoprotein, and that complex is pretty stable. It doesn't mutate as much. And so one of the possibilities is that that might be eventually uh, a target for a broader vaccination. And we'll talk a little bit about that because there's a recent paper that suggests that. There's one more variant, the BA 2.75. That's only up to 1.3 percent of uh, variants in the United States, but it is slowly rising. That one was first identified in India. And so, you know, as you can see, where there's a lot of virus still replicating, uh, where there are places that are unvaccinated, whether it's Africa or India, you know, that's where variants emerge. And while we can declare that it's over, things are over in the United States, that's not true. As long as there's replicating virus in the world and variants are forming, we're always going to have this around. There was a really interesting study that came out of Science Translational Medicine that looked at the effectiveness of the mRNA vaccines compared to a nucleocapsid vaccine. So all the vaccines that we've been talking about that are on the market are directed to the spike protein. But as I mentioned, there's another target, that nucleocapsid. That's the stuff that the proteins that coat the RNA. That doesn't mutate as often as the spike protein. So if you could potentially target that, you might get a better result. And so this was the studies that, that was done in hamsters and mice. Uh, and as I say, published in Science Translational Medicine. And what they looked at is, let's give a, 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 a nucleocapsid vaccine and see how effective it is uh, at neutralizing uh, the, more, the more recent um, variants. And it turns out, given alone, it does provide just a vaccine against the nucleocapsid, does pro provide some protection against the new variants. But when you combine the nucleocapsid protein with an RNA towards the spike, it's very, very effective. And so one new vaccine strategy might be, instead of just having two versions of the spike protein as a bivalent vaccine, having a nucleocapsid combined with the, uh, something to the spike. So I think that's really interesting, and I think that's probably going to be a, a long-term strategy, is get better vaccines that recognize things in the virus that don't change that often. So a little brief on, on monkeypox. Of course, China got their first case finally, but the good news is in the U.S., uh, the, CD, the CDC reports that monkeypox is coming down. Uh, you may have heard that we are recruiting folks at Baylor for a monkeypox uh, vaccine trial. So if you're interested, just write to monkeypoxvax at bcm.edu. So I want to end today with a bunch of shout outs. First of all, it is Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, and this is annually celebrated from September 15th to October 15th and recognizes the contributions and influence of Hispanic Americans to history, culture, and achievements in the U.S. Our mayor, Mayor Turner, recognized individuals with the, the Hispanic Heritage Awards uh, honoring exemplary Hispanics who made outstanding contributions. And our own Dr. Maria Elena Batazzi and Dr. Flor Munoz were joint honorees in the healthcare category for their work on the COVID vaccine and the COVID vaccine trial. So congratulations to both of you. This is also the National Postdoc Appreciation Week. <laughs> we never appreciate postdocs ever. So now it's our chance to ha have a national week for them to appreciate what they do. We can't run the labs without postdocs. So uh, we recognize the significant con contributions they make. They're vital to the research mission, uh, mission. And so on behalf of the faculty and the staff, we want all the postdocs who are doing great work at this institution to be, feel like we appreciate them. We really do, even though we don't act like it. Uh, I want to remind everybody that October 11th is the last day to register to vote for the November 8th elections. You know, if, if you have a strong opinion about what's going on in the world, get out there and vote. That's the most important thing you do, so please go uh, register. Also, a very interesting thing. Uh, we are helping take care of traumatic brain injuries in the Ukraine. So Dr. Mary Rose Newsom, who's an associate professor of uh, physical medicine and rehab medicine at Baylor, and Dr. Kenneth Padell, director of the Houston Methodist Concussion Center, are among a team of physicians who are helping uh, doctors in Ukraine manage uh, traumatic brain injury. It's a really great program. It was uh, highlighted in the Chronicle, and congratulations to both of them. You're doing really good work. And of course, very excited in the Dimmick County news, we have our new uh, Future Farmers of America uh, leadership. Uh, I want to 
congratulate the five new leaders who've been elected. Very excited about them. Wishing them a great year coming up. And then finally, it is Rosh Hashanah, the celebration of the Jewish New Year begins this Sunday and ends Tuesday evening. I want to say Happy New Year to all the friends and colleagues uh, celebrating Rosh Hashanah. Uh, time to throw away our sins. I've got a lot of sins to throw away. So if you got enough bread to throw in a river for me, think of me. Anyway, have a great weekend and I can't wait to see you next week. <laughs>